and welcome to this video series from OneHourTooth.com. My name is Stuart and I'll be the technician working on this case today. What I'd like to do is um, talk to you a little bit about the optical impression tool. And as we put this model together, it's very important that you get rid of all the information that you're not going to need. And that's the power of the optical impression tool and that's the, what this video is all about. It's about cleaning up your model. So when you get to the trim preparation screen, everybody pretty much either trims out their margin or trims out their die and moves forward. What you notice though is if I move this model and try to look at the buccal surface or lingual surface, it's obscured by all this flashing. All right, Basically it was either tongue cheek, cheek or a finger or something got in the way of the scanning process. So what I like to do is I like to trim it out or I basically like to do use my optical impression tool. Basically go up to your design and pull down your optical impression tools. The first tool that pops out is the cut out side tool. All right, Make room on your screen so that you can see everything around you and then rotate your, your model so that you can see 360 degrees around everything of importance. And then you'll see you start your lasso anywhere you'd like. You can even start it on the blue area if you'd like. Do not trim out anything that you need. Basically this tool is going to save everything on the inside that you lasso and everything on the outside is going to get trimmed out. And you can see I'm basically just going around all the flashing, not going over any of the teeth that I'm working with. It's going around the back side of this distal molar and I'm going to double click to end. It's going to save the restoration or the, I should say the DI or the digital impression um, in the inside. Everything on the outside get trimmed off. If there's any flashing that I really want to get off, um, let's say maybe this back part, I could use the cut inside tool. And the power of that tool is that basically anything I put inside the lasso is going to be punched out in exactly the same angle at which I lassoed it. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. But basically, as you look at the screen, as your eyes looking directly at the screen, that's how it's going to punch out the material. I'll double click here to end and you'll see it trims everything out. Now if I rotate the model, you'll see it trimmed it out on exactly the same angle at which I lassoed. A really unique way to look at that would be for me to punch some material through the side here. So if I were to make a circle in the side of this DI and double tap, it'll punch a hole right through the impression. See that? There's a hole right through it. Comes out the other side. Here's the other side, and if I rotate it, you can see through it. The hole. So that's a real powerful tool, and it has some really cool purposes. All right, One of those purposes is what I call the tissue punch. And what I use this for is if I have some bulbous tissue uh, on the gingiva here that maybe is sticking up right up next to my margin, I'll go in right next to my margin, making sure I don't cut it off, and I'll punch the tissue out horizontally. All right, See that? I didn't hit the margin. I just punched the tissue out sideways. And you say, isn't that going to screw up your contact? Well, no, because my contact's going to be up here. There is another way to punch out the tissue or use this tissue, tissue punch technique, and that's to go in like a 45 or a 60 degree angle, start out here somewhere, work your way around the margin, not touching the margin, okay? And then work your way slightly up, just a little bit up the adjacent tooth. I went a little bit low. I'm going to go a little higher this time. And then double tap. Now this punches it out on a 45 degree angle, but instead of horizontally, downward. And if you look at this from the side angle, it does relatively the same thing, but doesn't take as much of a chunk out of the, out of the adjacent tooth. All right, and you can see the hole it punched right all the way through the impression. The beauty of this is that when the, when the software goes to generate the restoration, okay, it's not going to see this tissue and impinge the design upon the contact. So as the height of contour comes up, to meet the other tooth, it's not going to be impinged. And when you use your contact tool, you'll see the red typically as it emerges from the margin and impinges the, the porcelain that you're making. If you do this, you won't. It'll emerge from the margin in a nice, smooth, even way right up to the adjacent tooth. Now, the, this process is not actually done now. We still need to trim out our tooth. So I'm going to get rid of the correct optical impression tool. Wait for it for a second. And then I'm going to use my lasso technique. I could do this two ways. I could just trim horizontally. Let me show you the trim horizontally technique first, which is to trim off one side first. So here I'm going to trim this side off first. 
okay? And I'm going to show you the other technique. This is the technique I typically use. is the lasso method, in which you go around your margin, all in one motion, not going up onto your margin, but going around it, all in one motion, and double clicking to end, and it'll trim out everything else except for your margin. See that? And that's pretty much how you do it. The next process is going to be drawing the margin and your antagonist, and we can do that as well. Let me show you the trick, trick on that. You could correct the optical impression on your impression as well, but it doesn't make any sense. We really only use that in buckle scan. In bite registration, you use the trim method. Now when I trim out my bite registration, it's given to you in this position. And what I like to do is rotate from lingual to buckle so I can see that buckle impression typically. Start somewhere I know. It could be on this tooth or it could be on this tooth, either way. All right. You'll also notice that there's an imaginary line across the screen with your tail on your crosshairs. You see the blue tail coming from the top to the middle of the screen where my crosshair is. If I were to move my mouse down, the blue would start from the bottom and work its way up. Basically, there's a, a mediation or an equator point in the middle of the screen where when my mouse is on the bottom, the cut line will start at the bottom. If my mouse is slightly up the equator line of the screen to the top, it'll start trimming from there. I start usually trimming from the top and work my way down. That's just the format that I've developed. The first thing you do, I said, rotate lingual to buckle so that you can see the inside surface of the impression. Otherwise, you're just looking straight down. This way you get more area to work with. And start your trim. Work as high up as you can on the buckle impression. Working over to the adjacent tooth, okay? Working up as high as you can on the impression without going up on the wall. And then crossing over only once. Two clicks to stop. Now don't just move forward. Rotate your model sideways and check your digital impression. Make sure that your bite registration doesn't have any spikes in it coming down. It doesn't have any holes and that you have enough clearance to possibly make your restoration. One of the tricks I use is I zoom in all of the way, as far as it'll go, and I check the clearance and I put my finger on the screen. If my finger can fit in between the restoration and the impression, I have almost two, uh, two millimeters of clearance, which is enough to make the restoration. Um, so basically this model is done and the next video will be in modeling. So I hope you stay tuned for the next model, but this concludes digital impression and the optical impression tool getting you ready for modeling your DI. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Stuart from OneHourTooth.com. Get in touch with us if you'd like on the website, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.